What's up, college football fans? We're just about five, six days away from the college football playoff national championship. And if you want more videos around the great score, sport of college football, hit that big red button and subscribe. Transfer portal drama continues to heat up with Caleb Williams entering the transfer portal. That's the topic of today's show. You're watching Chat Sports. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. A little college football now coming your way here on a Tuesday. And late on Monday afternoon, we got hit with the news that Caleb Williams, the superstar young quarterback out of Oklahoma, is entering the transfer portal. Uh, did release a long statement saying how great of a season it was at OU and that Oklahoma would definitely still be an option. But... Then we got hit with the news that Dylan Gabriel, the former UCF quarterback who initially transferred to UCLA, announced he would be heading to Oklahoma. So that obviously throws a wrench into things uh, for OU fans wanting to bring Williams back. You also have this from Pete Thamel uh, saying, Carl Williams, the father of Caleb Williams, tells Yahoo Sports, which is where Thamel is employed, that the family has followed the NCAA process uh, uh, his son doesn't have a destination picked out. He's wide open. Williams stressed that preparing his son to be an NFL quarterback is going to be the most important factor. A couple of things to, to factor in here before we get to 10 potential transfer destinations for Williams. This would be a huge blow to Oklahoma. Uh, make no mistake, Dylan Gabriel, that's a nice recovery. Uh, and I, by the way, I assume with Gabriel flipping to OU from UCLA and the transfer portal, Oklahoma's got to be thinking we don't have a very good chance of convincing Williams to stay because why would Gabriel take that leap and say yeah I'll come to OU uh, because if Williams decides to return then Gabriel's not going to start because Caleb Williams is better than Dylan Gabriel so this would be a huge blow to Oklahoma if it happens and I think it is going to happen with the Gabriel news of transferring to Oklahoma so a lot of moving parts maybe he decides to go back to Norman I don't think it's that high of a possibility will Caleb Williams transfer from Oklahoma type Y for yes type N for no I think the answer is yes again especially after that Gabriel news go ahead and cast your votes and let us know what you guys think Okay, so now we're going to focus on Caleb Williams' transfer destinations. Ten programs he could play at next year, including a couple of uh, you know bonus uh, schools as well. We'll put Oklahoma at number ten on the list. Maybe he uh, pulls out of the portal and returns to Norman. I had him OU in the top three before the Gabriel news, but again, I just I don't think that's very likely at this point in time. Number nine, the Maryland Terrapins. Maryland, you're probably thinking Maryland, uh, they stink. Well. They've gotten better under Mike, Mike Loxley, but I don't think it's very likely for a couple of reasons. Number one, Maryland's not a you know a uh, NFL professional quarterback factory necessarily. Number two, Talua Tugavailoa, the younger brother of Tua, has actually played pretty well, and he's their starter, although Caleb Williams would be an upgrade. Uh, but Williams was a finalist, or Maryland was a finalist for Williams when he was coming out of high school. He's from the D.C. area, so, you know, if he wanted to return home, that could be an option. Again, don't think it's very likely, but thought I would include them on this list. Number eight, how about Notre Dame? Jack Cohen, uh, the grad senior, he will be gone. Obviously, Notre Dame, you know, coming off a great season, lost a tough one. Uh, in the uh, Fiesta Bowl to uh, Oklahoma State, but still a great season. Marcus Freeman's their head coach now. Eh, I don't know. I don't see it personally. Uh, they haven't had a ton of success with producing NFL quarterbacks either. Uh, I think I read a stat recently because Ian Book started for the Saints uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Notre Dame quarterbacks have lost 24 straight starts in the NFL. So, uh, again, if we're to believe that uh, making him the most NFL ready he can be is going to dictate his choice, Notre Dame's going to be a little lower on my list. Where will Caleb Williams play in 2022? Predict it for us in the comment section still several schools to break down what do you guys think where will he play next season how about the clemson tigers uh listen they have five star uh k klubnik coming in out of austin texas he's uh the real deal by all accounts uh but we've already seen williams play uh you know what you've got there he's a he's a star in the making and you factor in dj ui Ungolale. he he was terrible for, for the Tigers this year. He, he flashed a lot in 2020 when he had to play in a couple of games when Trevor Lawrence had, missed a couple games with COVID, but that did not translate to 2021. He was bad this season. A lot of people think Klubnik could start uh, for Clemson in 2021. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But again, 
East Coast. That's where Williams is from. Uh, we know Dabo Swinney's had a lot of success there. Could be an option for uh, Williams. We'll see if Clemson pursues him in the portal. Penn State at number six. Sean Clifford did announce he will return for a sixth college football season, but he's not that good, if we're being honest. East Coast ties. Penn State uh, put a lot of talent in the NFL, albeit not really at the quarterback position. Uh, James Franklin would love to get his hands on a, a quarterback of Caleb Williams' stature. That's really been what's held them back in the Big Ten uh, to not be able to get over the hump uh, of the likes of Ohio State. They haven't had that superstar quarterback. Williams would certainly be that guy. If you love college football, subscribe to the channel. Hit that big red button. National championship game almost here. We'll have more recruiting stuff between now and February as well as uh, things continue to unfold and potentially more transfer portal uh, news and rumors as well. So subscribe. Don't miss any of it. College football is becoming a year-round sport. Uh, before we get to the top five, I think some other you know dark horse landing spots for Williams could include these three schools. Auburn, Bo Nix transfers, TJ Finley has got some talent. I don't know if he's exactly the answer there. Florida, they don't have the long-term answer at quarterback on the roster. Uh, I think Emory Jones is going to enter the portal. Uh, Anthony Richardson, eh. Uh, North Carolina, Sam Howell declared for the draft. Could be a replacement there. You get him, uh, you know, Williams back to the East Coast a little bit. Uh, Mac Brown is a fun coach to play for, so those could be some other options. All right, at number five, the Texas A&M Aggies. Uh, listen, uh, what A&M has done in recruiting and, uh, you know, building talent there, I think they're going to be pretty active in the portal as well. Uh, A&M's humming with talent. Jimbo Fisher has uh, things rolling down in College Station. I think NIL deals uh, with local businesses would be a possibility there as well. A&M has been willing to invest in their athletic department. So I think uh, this is a sneaky option. I haven't heard a lot of buzz yet, but do not be surprised if A&M takes a swing here, even though they've already gone out and gotten Max Johnson from LSU. Uh, you, should not, uh, you should not not pursue Williams because of Max Johnson. I mean, Williams is a much better talent. Number four, the Ole Miss Rebels. We know uh, Lane Kiffin is looking for his next quarterback to replace Matt Corral, who's off to the NFL. Uh, Luke Altmaier played in most of the Sugar Bowl after uh, uh, Corral got injured. Uh, he didn't show me a ton, albeit he's a former ESPN Top 200 commit. Lane Kiffin plus Caleb Williams would be electric. It would be fire. It would be uh, fun to watch Caleb Williams in that offense. Could you imagine if Caleb Williams and Lane Kiffin won an SEC championship? It would be tough, but it would be a hell of a story. Um, I think Ole Miss is a team to watch for, uh, for Williams and other quarterbacks in the transfer portal. Another team, LSU, at number three, Miles Brennan uh, did announce he's coming back. Uh, they've got Garrett Nussmeyer, five-star quarterback Walker Howard is coming in. But again, we know what Caleb Williams is. We saw him shine as a true freshman this year at Oklahoma, and that is after he didn't play his senior year of high school football due to COVID. This was his first action in two years, and he looked like a Heisman favorite going into 22, at least one of the top three or four candidates. So you get a guy like that to LSU, it, that could have the Joe Burrow effect. I mean, LSU could go from 6-6 six and six, uh, to contending in the SEC West. I don't think uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, out of the realm of possibility. How about Georgia? What have we said for years now since Kirby Smart's been their head coach, and even before that with Mark Richt? They can't figure out the quarterback. Like, Stetson Bennett's been nice. You get, they've got JT Daniels, but uh, Georgia needs a star at quarterback. They've got everything else. They've got the talent at receiver, running back, offensive line, defense. We know how good the defense is. Uh, but they can't get the star quarterback, which is why uh, we saw what happened in the SEC championship game. We'll see if Georgia gets their revenge on Bama in the national title. But all year, Georgia looked like the better team. What was the difference, though? Bryce Young is much better than Stetson Bennett. Uh, if Georgia had Bryce Young and Alabama had Stetson Bennett, I think Georgia would have blown him out. But you need a star quarterback, in most cases, to win a national championship, and Caleb Williams is a star quarterback. Who wins the natty? We'll find out in five or six days. Type A for Alabama, type G for Georgia. Can't wait for the rematch. We'll see how it shakes out on Monday night. And USC's got to be number one, right? I mean... We know the relationship he has with Lincoln Riley. It would piss off a lot of Oklahoma fans. But listen, uh, I am basing this on a couple of things. No, one, we know he and Lincoln Riley have a good relationship. We know Lincoln Riley would like to get his hands on Caleb Williams. Let's, let's make that very clear. And number two, if we are to believe the report from Pete Thamel where he talked to Caleb Williams' dad, Carl, saying – this decision will be primarily dictated on what helps Caleb become the best prospect for the NFL he can be. Who is plugging out first-round quarterbacks more than anybody? It's Lincoln Riley. Uh, 
Baker Mayfield, number one overall pick. Uh, Kyler Murray, number one overall pick. He turned Jalen Hurts into a fringe draft prospect, into a second-round pick, and now Hurts has led the Philadelphia Eagles to the NFL playoffs. Like, Caleb Williams goes to USC. He plays there two years. He's a top-five pick in a couple years. I mean, that's just how that would play out. Uh, so I think it's safe to assume that USC will and should be number one on this list. Caleb Williams says he'll take a couple days to decompress before he starts this process. Should be fascinating to see where he ends up. Who's the better option for Caleb Williams? USC, Oklahoma. Again, I think he's leaving Oklahoma. What do you guys think down in the comments? Type USC, type OU. We'll continue to monitor this situation as it go along, and if there are new developments, we will have it covered. So subscribe and don't miss any of our college football coverage.